All right. Now that we're back, let's get ready for part two of Buzzard Gulch. All right, here we go. So now, let's say on one Saturday, you know, people are in the mall and they're out for Cinnabons and there is an incident. I don't know, you bump into somebody and uh, there's an altercation. Okay, and during the altercation, security is called, you know, private security, which has been mandated, you know, and hired by the uh, owners. And they have a particular mandate to keep commerce going. All right. They come, they, let's say there's a fight because you stepped on my new Nikes. And, you know, they come and they break up the fight. And in the course of, let's say, breaking up the fight, someone is injured. Let's say the, I don't know, the father that has uh, paid for the privilege of being there with his family uh, gets into the altercation because one of his children stepped on somebody's fresh sneakers. And now he's defended them and... The private security came in and, you know, break it up and the father gets hurt. Now, let's say it's a serious life-threatening injury and the father is, you know, really pretty messed up. Here is the issue. While the private security is handling the situation and the father feels like, well, hey, they didn't have to be so uh, rough. And the family decides that they want to sue. Okay. Here is the question. Has the private security force violated their mandate? Let's say for the sake of this exercise that the father dies. And there is an investigation, and during the investigation, they go through uh, all the aspects, and they find that there is no wrongdoing. And you say, wait a minute, but they killed a man, you know, injured him greatly. Why is there no recompense for what has taken place? Why are they not at fault? Well, let us look at what has happened. Has the private security force violated their mandate? They're there to ensure the flow of commerce. The man and his family were not really conducting flow of commerce. They were basically just homesteading. And by design, has the private security force violated their mandate, which the owners have hired them for? The answer is no. So no matter how much life is lost, no how much they may, quote unquote, say that they are there to protect and serve, whose agenda are they protecting? And whose mandate are they serving? The answer would be the owners of the revenue generating district and not the gentleman and his family. And you would say, well, they paid for the privilege of being there, but you're not conducting commerce. So now all of these conditions that would have otherwise just been everyday occurrences. Now you got to pay for this and you got to have a license for that and you got to have a fine for that. Okay, you know where this is going, blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Now, let us move forward. We talked about Buzzard Gulch being a revenue generating district. Now, let's move forward to today. Where do you live? You live in a municipality. All municipalities throughout the United States are revenue generating districts, just like Buzzard Gulch. Remember, they have city limits. They have, uh, you know, they tell you what their population is. 
they have ordinances. Now, while they don't, there are so many these days, they don't post them on a sign, but I'm sure they're available online. But let's, let's look at this. So now, if a revenue generating district is the same as any mall across the country and municipality is the same, let's look at low income housing. Let's go to the hood. You have an owner, you know, you have low income housing, you know, development, which has an owner, stockholders, maybe, right? They have, uh, in that municipality, they have a private security force who is there to conduct, help conduct the flow of commerce. Now you have individuals, they give you, uh, you know, program section eight or really low rents and so forth. So now you are under the impression that, hey, this is a, you know, cheap place to homestead like the gentleman in the mall. But now all of a sudden you move forward and the private security force is uh, hanging around this development and you know when you pull out of the development your vehicle you're getting quote unquote profiled whether that be racially motivated or otherwise that's not you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a racial thing although we know that in this political climate that we live in it's more than likely going to be racially motivated Okay, so now you live in low-income housing, and just like the gentleman and his family in the mall, you are homesteading. You're not conducting the flow of commerce. So now you have the private security force that's hanging around the development. And, well, your taillight is out. And do you live here? Uh, we just got a call about a, a burglary or a robbery. Who do you know in this neighborhood? Where's your ID and all these kinds of things? Just like when they started to produce different fees and things for the people being there. Now you get traffic tickets because now they lower the speed limit around that area, which is utterly ridiculous to the point where you can't come and go freely as you please. Uh, people are being uh, constantly harassed 24 hours a day. Well, let, let us not say harassed. Let's use the term policed or uh they're const constantly and vigorously being surveilled. But wait a minute. It's a revenue generating district and you set up a homestead. So basically, if that's the condition of every municipality around the country, then that means for you to come and live inside a local municipality just like the guy in the mall, which you thought was so ridiculous. All right, we're going to take a quick break right here, and I'll see you right back.